Hi everyone! Welcome to this video about making your pinch forms. Uh, this is the first time that we're going to open the bag of clay. I'm thinking about how to best utilize this entire bag of clay for the whole term as well. So since just to get us all on the same page, I'm going to start by roughly dividing this clay into thirds. I'm just going across it with my finger. I've got my cutting tool here that I made with dental floss and two little pencil sticks. And I'm gonna cut across this first third of the bag of clay. Just make a straight cut across. And then I'm gonna divide that in half, going down. So I've got my big chunk of clay here, and out of this, I'm gonna make six pinch forms. So I'm gonna divide this into roughly six equal pieces by maybe first cutting it in half like this, and then cutting those into thirds. And so now I've got roughly six equal pieces. This is about the size piece of clay I'm gonna make each one of my six pinch forms with. So while I'm working with that one, it'd probably be a good idea to keep the other five of them wrapped up in plastic. I'm gonna start by slapping it, pounding it into a round shape. I hope you guys have all gone and read those um, book excerpts from the Paulus Berenson Finding One's Way with Clay book. I really liked that. I know he gets a little uh, woo-woo with some of the stuff and the breathing in and out and pinching the clay and feeling the power of the clay come into you and putting your power into the clay and all. And I don't always do all of that when I'm pinching pieces. I I enjoy it and I hope you did too. Here's my ball of clay now and I'm gonna start just by taking my thumb and pushing it into the middle. So with my thumb on the inside, I'm pinching my thumb against my fingers with the clay wall in between and I'm turning it around in my rounded or cupped um, left hand to help control the shape. Usually I start for a while just with my thumb in like that and I'm using you know a fair amount of pressure and just kind of feeling the stiffness or the softness of the clay. Now I'm gonna do a different move now on the inside where I stick more fingers in there and I'm going to stretch it out so you can literally see the pressure of my fingers stretching the clay wall out. Paulus Berenson talked about really using this as an opportunity to feel the quality of the clay that we're using and how thin can you stretch it without poking a hole in it or you know even if you wanted to poke a hole in it um, that would be fine too but just kind of seeing the limits of the material really feeling its texture and I'm going to do some more of the other pinching on the side to try to keep the piece rounded I mean rounded in profile this way I'm moving my fingers around it so as I pinch towards the rim I'm moving my fingers around. The clay is going to follow the direction I move my fingers in. So if I want this rim to stay enclosed, I can bring my fingers around and I'm kind of coaxing and stretching the clay with me as I do. I could, you know, alternatively flare it out. And so instead of coming around like this, I might flare it out like that flexing it out. The clay is really soft right now, so I can manipulate it in a bunch of different directions. Another thing that I'm noticing as I'm doing this is the marks of my fingers on the piece. Because I was moving my fingers across in a little bit of an angle, I noticed that there's these kind of spiral-like lines of indentations starting to happen across this shoulder area of the piece. What I like to do when I'm making pinch forms like this is kind of get it to a certain point and then set it aside, let it sit, maybe start another one and come back to it. Just being exposed like this and sitting out in the air for 
10 or 15 minutes, it will noticeably firm up and get to the next stage of stiffness. Ultimately, I'm probably gonna wanna flatten that out anyway, so I could do that now if I wanted to. With this piece of clay, instead of being round, I'm gonna start with it more in an oval shape. And now when I open it up, I'm gonna do it along the length of it. You know, and you notice I'm calling it the pinch form project, not the pinch pot project, because the pieces you make don't have to be pots at all. You can make anything you want. You could make um, organic shapes. You could make abstract sculpture. I have one here I was working on yesterday that kind of looks like a banana peel, but um, I just like the spiral quality of it, so I just kept coaxing it in that direction again and again. And maybe this one I will set down to kind of flatten out more intentionally from the beginning. And I can start to make more of a separate wall from the floor. I also talked on the rubric for this project about the notion of volume and inside space and outside space. The internal capacity of the piece is one way to think about volume. It's 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 different from the the shape of it, it's different from the profile of it. It has to do with the space on the inside. So this one has a pretty clearly defined inside space and I feel like I'm I'm working with that space on the inside by the way it comes in at the neck and flares back out on the rim this one though is a completely different sense of inside space uh, because of the way it goes around and around and on this one the inside space is very revealed and then if you turn it another way what was revealed becomes concealed so it's just a different way of exposing itself Everything that is made out of clay and fired in a kiln needs to be open somehow. A very important principle of clay, firing it in a kiln, is not to have any air that's completely enclosed, like pockets of air. In other words, I couldn't cap this off right now and seal it all up and have an air pocket that was trapped in there because then in the kiln firing, it would explode. Because when air gets hot, it expands and it needs to have a way to escape. So that's something to remember. Okay, so I could work on this one some more and kind of make it more square, more rectangular. I talked also in the rubric about the notion of appendages or bringing out other aspects of the wall out into space. So maybe I'll do that with the four corners on this one and I'm going to come here and I'm going to start to pinch out and extend out the four corners separate from the wall. And that's really changing the shape of the mouth. So maybe I can come and I'm going to do that a little more intentionally. Lots of things in ceramics, I start to see them happen, and then if I like it, I go further in that direction. There. Well, this just got a whole lot more interesting in terms of the shape. So I think I'll work with that shape more. But again, I might set this aside and let it firm up for maybe 15 minutes and then come back to it. So I have some other ones over here that I've been working on for the past day or so. The spiral one, maybe you can notice how on the outside it has a different texture to it. And I made that texture by going across it with the tip of my finger. I think I'm getting a little scratch from my fingernail on there. And I really like that, how the marks, how I can make them go across the form. And so where the form kind of curves around, I'm making my finger curve around also and making it seem like the texture marks on it are 
um, part of the form itself. And then on the inside of this that's more smooth, I did a little bit of going across it with a damp sponge to help smooth it out some more. So you notice with my sponge here, I'm wringing out all the water. I don't want to use too much water on these pieces. I'm trying to build shape and make it a certain shape. And water can make the clay collapse, basically melt it like into a mud puddle. So I don't want to use too much water on these, but a little bit of dampness is okay. You might notice that the rims especially start to get this cracking that happens on them, especially when they get really thin. As it dries, you might notice little kind of micro tears. I just get wet fingertips, just wet fingertips and just run that around the rim only. I don't want water to puddle or dribble down the whole sides. Yeah. Sometimes I really like the uneven rim, the way it kind of undulates up and down. Sometimes I want it to be straight. Like on this rectangular one, I'm definitely, once that firms up a little bit, I'm gonna cut it with my knife. So here's a pinch form that I did yesterday. It has this stiffness to it that I call cheese hard. Cheese hard like cheddar cheese, like a block of cheddar cheese. How stiff does that feel? That's how this feels right now. Whereas like when it's fresh out of the bag, it's more the consistency of like cream cheese. Like I could almost spread it with a knife, but this right now I can't. So this cheddar cheese or cheese hard consistency is really great for cutting a straight line into. If you try and cut a straight line like on this soft one right now, which is really more like cream cheese still, it, it'll just mush. It's like trying to cut a straight line in a block of cream cheese. Like you just can't keep it straight. But now with cheddar cheese, I can. So I like these kind of segmented areas and I just kind of pinched it out like that. I like the overall shape of it and I kind of like what was happening with these edges on the inside but I feel like I wanna just define it a bit more. It's got such a clean symmetry to it. So I'm using my left hand to help guide the knife as it goes around. And the thing I like to think about when I'm cutting in a clay is that you can always cut more off, right? But if you cut too much, it's a lot harder to add back on. But you can kind of see how that really um, defined that edge right there. And I could even come and like I kind of want to cut this on the inside and really make it intentional, these kind of curved lines in there. Okay, so since I cut that, it's kind of square and sharp, and I'm gonna go over with wet fingertips and smooth it and soften it. I should say also, all these little scraps of clay I'm gonna save all these. I'm gonna get another plastic bag or a plastic container with a lid, and I'm gonna save all those scraps of clay. And later on in the term, I'll talk to you about recycling them because we can reuse all that material. If you're working with your clay and you have one you're just making a mess out of and you really don't like it anymore at all and you wanna redo, that's fine. Um, you can just smush it up, but then the clay will probably be getting kind of stiff. So I would get a new piece of clay and save that smushed up one to add in with the recycling of material that we'll do later this term. So that looks a lot nicer over there, a lot more controlled and intentional than it does on the other side. So I'm going to do that all the way around. Here's another pinched out appendage one that I did earlier today kind of like what I was starting to do with this rectangular one. And on this one, obviously, I made these pinched outlines in a kind of a zigzag pattern going across the form. I pinched out the form first in a round uh, ball shape, but then I, I pinched out these extensions from it going across. And then I went around with wet fingertips on the rim and kind of made this area noticeably more smooth and I also exaggerated my finger marks in here a little bit and kind of went in with my pinky and made some um, 
stronger indentations just to give it more contrast between the smooth area and the rough area. And this one is fairly smooth and I'm just gonna take some little things that I've um, collected here. This is an old earring that I don't have the matching one to anymore so now I'm gonna use it as a clay tool. And let's see what that looks like. When I press it in, I'm pressing it against my other fingers on the inside so I don't bust through by mistake. Oh, that's gonna look great. Look at that, that's so vivid. I wanna go around the whole way. Yeah, and then when I glaze it, the glaze is gonna catch in that texture also. Some other tools I have here, uh, a seashell. This I could just poke in the end like a stamp, or maybe I could roll it across. Yeah, it's kinda neat. Some curved lines. I'm asking you guys to get creative with texture marks, with your pinch marks that your fingers naturally leave in the piece as you're working on them. Oh, that's nice. If you're working on your pieces and you need to leave them aside and come back to them later, I'm talking longer than 15 minutes, like for a couple hours, or even leave them overnight and come back to them later, you have to wrap them in plastic, especially when the clay gets this thin, it's gonna dry out really quickly. I've got my plastic bag here, and if I'm gonna come back to these later, make sure that you wrap them. You notice I'm putting them inside the plastic bag, and I'm gonna cover them. Don't leave like a big puffy air bubble in there either, like, cover them kind of sandwich tight. If they're getting too dry for you, you can go around the rims with wet fingertips. Again, don't have them sitting in a puddle of water. You could even give them just a really gentle spray with a spray bottle of water, but watch out. Too much water and they'll dissolve and you'll lose the shape that you have. I'm just gonna go in with a pencil and I'm gonna put LC. You have to put your initials on everything. I'm gonna make sure that there's no crumbs of clay anywhere and that the areas that I wanna have smooth are truly smooth and make it look like a nicely finished object. Uh, just, you know, general craftsmanship and working with the material. When you are totally 100% done with working on your pieces, then you can just leave them uncovered. You don't need to wrap them in plastic once you're sure that you're 100% done. But they're gonna dry out quickly, probably as soon as a few hours left completely uncovered, they will get to the next stage of dryness. Beyond cheese hard, the next stage is called bone dry, where it starts to actually change color and get chalky looking, which is fine. All of our pieces are gonna get bone dry before they get fired in the kiln. I'm just telling you about this ahead of time because once they get bone dry, they get really fragile. They're really prone to breaking. So once you're done with your pieces and you've left them uncovered, which is fine, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a safe place to put them until you drop them off for kiln firing at Clark. You wanna make sure that you have a, uh, a safe shelf or gently nestled in a box or a tub with maybe crumpled newspaper on the bottom, somewhere where your cat's not gonna jump up and knock them over because once they turn bone dry, they're extremely fragile. Okay, bye you guys.